welcome to the Broadview Public Library's Book Banter. Today we are bantering about the book At the Quiet Edge by Victoria Helen Stone. I am Tisha. I am Yvonne. I'm Andrea. And we are three librarians bantering about books. So this was Miss Yvonne's pick. She's going to give us a summary and we are going to get into it. Mm-hmm. Well, um, mm-hmm. well the, the story starts out with Lily, who is managing a self-storage facility, like way out in the middle of nowhere, but on, like it's on the edge of town. It's this business park. Nobody lives out there but her it's a, and her son. So she lives in the house managing this. They have some neighbors across the street. They have like a custom furniture shop. And that's the only people that really live out in this area. So the story starts off one night. Uh, this police comes to her facility, and he's looking for somebody. Um, she assumes it's for her husband because years ago her husband had committed this crime. And he ran off before he actually went to jail. Um, during the trial, he just took off, left her hanging, you know, having the bag. So they thought maybe she was involved and she thought maybe that's why they was coming around, trying to see if she had saw him, did she know where he is, did she know what his money is. So the cop tells her they're looking for somebody, a person, a lady, somebody who disappeared. And she said, no, she hadn't seen anybody. He said, you see any strange cars hanging around, any people hanging around this area? She said, no, I haven't. The cop kind of thinks she's lying about something. What he doesn't say or or he doesn't think he knows what it is, but he knows it's something. She's not really telling the truth about something. So he tells her if he you know, sees anything or whatever, let him know. So he leaves. And in the meantime, uh, she has this friend who they was helping, like, ladies who were afraid of their husbands, like battered women. They were help these ladies, like, get away from their husbands. So her secret was she was helping her friend hide these women there at the storage facility because they had empty storage areas. People leave their stuff. Nobody, you know, ever even came out of this area at all. So they would, you know, these ladies would stay here maybe a day or two until they can get information or money, you know, so they can start a new life somewhere else. So Lily was kind of getting, you know, kind of antsy because now the police will come around, so now she's scared that either they're going to find out that or they are still thinking that she has something to do with her husband's crimes that he had committed. Um, her husband committed these, like, crimes. He, would, like, he was stealing money from the town. He, like, embezzled money from the town, everybody knew in the town. <laughs> and he, you know, assumed, you know, she assumed he was this upstanding guy. So how the story goes, how she meets her husband, she used to live in this town when she was a little girl. Her mom and dad seemed happy and whatever, but her dad eventually leaves her mom for another woman. So her mom and her leaves the town, moves away. This man, her husband, her dad stays there, has another wife, has more kids, which she never knew about or ever, you know, seen after that. So her and her mother never had a really good relationship because after they moved, the mom was kind of promiscuous. She had a lot of boyfriends or whatever. So when she was 18, her mom finally takes off with one of these men. And she never sees her again. So she thought that was great because now she can start her own life. So she decides to go to college. She wanted to be a CPA. So that's where she meets her soon-to-be husband. He was older, more mature than the other boys who went to the colleges. So that's what attracted her the most to him at the first time. He took her to all these different restaurants, showed her different things. So she was like, wow, he's like great and wonderful and all this. So they eventually decide they want to move in together. Well, she... You know, wanted to marry him right away, but he just wanted to live together first. And then eventually they do, they move in, they have this great life because, you know, he got this great job, he's taking care of her. She gets pregnant in the meantime. So after she got pregnant, she stopped going to school and they decided they're going to get married. So when he asked her where she wanted to live, she wanted to move back to this town because she remembered how happy she was. She thought it was a great place to raise kids. And she figured since her dad lived there and he had kids, you know, he had family there. She could actually, you know, visit or whatever, and it'd be great. So they moved back to this town. They buy a nice little house. Um, I guess he works in a town somewhere. Eventually, you know, everybody thinks he's great until he's. They find out he's ripping them off. He didn't rip out the townspeople, everybody they know. And when they come one day to her house, knocking her door open, telling her that you know they're looking for him. So at this time, their son is five. He's freaking out and scared because you know the police are there. You know, they banging, lights are flashing, they're looking for his dad. <laughs> so his dad takes off. He runs. So 
while they're searching the house, you know, they're tearing up the house or whatever, he calls and tells her to meet him somewhere with the car, so I guess he can get away. But in the meantime, the son sees him leave this little book somewhere, like drops it, and, and I guess the son picks it up in the meantime. Nobody ever knows he had this book for years and years and years. So Lily, when she gets back to the house after, you know, they question her about, you know, what happened, does she know anything, blah, blah, blah. They tell her, well, you got 30 days to get out of this house, but they figured he took this money and bought the house and everything you have, so they took everything. She didn't have no house, no nothing. So her and the little boy had to start over. So she eventually goes, I guess, gets a job, and the way she got this job was through the stepmom. She didn't like her in the first place. Uh... But, oh, God, prior to this, her dad dies. She goes to the funeral. The stepmom knows about her, but she never told her kids that the dad had a child prior to this marriage. So when she shows up to the funeral, they like, who was that lady? Who was that? And, and she's like, hmm, did nobody know I existed? <laughs> so she was kind of off-putting by that because she's thinking, you know, she moved back here to have family, but... Yet, that woman didn't have nothing to do with her, didn't want her to even tell her she was related to the kids or anything. But for some reason, she got her this job at this place when she needed help. But I think she did it because it was way out of the nowhere. Nobody knew, you know, at the edge of town, nobody goes there unless you need a storage facility. So I guess she, you know, he lived there for years. Where's, by the time this story starts off, the boy's like, what, 12, 13 years old? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess the dad, in the meantime, has been trying to contact her and the little boy. And she doesn't want to have the little boy have anything to do with the dad anymore because she figured, you know, whatever he's involved in, she doesn't want him involved in it. She doesn't want to have anything to do with the child or nothing. So she doesn't tell the little boy the dad's been trying to call. So she just, you know, if he calls, he does, she doesn't say anything. He sends cards, she stores them away so the little boy won't say anything. So I guess by that time, the little boy is, you know, he's lonely. There's nobody out there for him to play with. He got no friends, no nothing. Yeah, one friend. That little girl, but they didn't meet until mm -mm, like that later. Boy on. That was gaming. Remember? Oh yeah, they and used then, to, but then they stopped hanging out. Cause he wanted to play games, yeah. right? And then they just stopped. He don't have no phone. And the, oh, right. right. <laughs> on the yeah. cell phone. Yeah. 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 yeah, everybody else had a cell phone, but him. Right. And, and she kept wanna, begging his mom, yeah. but she feel you know. Maybe dad probably tried to call him, or he tried to, you know. Right, that didn't make no sense because yeah. they was way out there in the middle of nowhere. He needed a phone. He needed something because right. it was nobody. He caught the bus all the way from school back there. By himself, nothing else anything could have happened. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so if somebody else started. I'm sorry. Oh, um, uh, oh, so at this point, um, like she said, the little boy didn't have a phone. He's begging his mom for a phone. Um, for his birthday. I think his birthday is coming up or right, something. He's going to be 13 soon. Yeah, and like you said, it's middle of like nowhere, and he meets this girl on the bus because her friend moved out of town, so now she ain't got nobody to talk to, so they kind of come together, and um, Everett doesn't know what his mom is doing, so she, like Miss Yvonne said, is helping her friend um, shelter these battered women who are trying to um, leave their husbands um, and she can't let anybody know because it's against the rules obviously of the storage facility right, nobody should be living there. because she has them sheltered in one of the units in some old RV or something somebody's unit so she thinks that this is her biggest crime like she's trying to keep this under wraps so that her neighbors across the street her nosy neighbor one of the ladies is nosy she always coming over she always inviting them to places but she don't want to go um, she kind of wants to keep to herself because of what happened with her husband she was an outcast in the town after that. Um, you know, everybody still blames her for the crimes of her husband, even though she doesn't have anything to do with them. So she's just trying to keep to herself, live her life, save her money, so her and her son can get out. She can become a CPA like she was supposed to be. Right, because she went back to school. Right, she, she was taking place. night classes or whatever she's doing. Um, so she wants to make a better life for her son, for her and her son. She doesn't want to be at the manager of the storage facility and live in this little apartment above it for the rest of their life. So she's trying to do the right thing. She's trying to stay on the up and up because she's already on the police radar. Any chance they get, you know, to come back about her husband. So she's trying to keep everything on the level and not commit any crimes, not do anything to draw attention to herself. 
So that's why she's kind of shaken up when this cop comes by asking these random questions. She thinks it's about her husband, um, and she's trying to deflect from the fact that, you know, she's you having she these women, um, you know, coming in. Like the package. The package was delivered is how they how they call it. Because right. it is a storage unit, so sometimes packages do get delivered there. Yeah. Not human ones, but... <laughs> So she's trying to stay under the radar. So all this time, this cop is just being creepy. He's coming around. He's basically asking her questions. He's being a jerk to her. And she continually thinks this is about her husband um, and his crimes. Um, So uh, long story short, her son sometimes helps her out at the storage unit because it's just her. So she handles everything, all the maintenance, all the cleanup. She does everything by herself, and her son helps her take the trash out, walk around sometimes. One night or one day when her son was walking around, he notices that there's an unlocked storage unit. So he decides to go inside it, even though he knows he's not supposed to. And there are cameras everywhere, so he tries to. He goes inside it, and he sees... Um, he sees a board or something or some type of... With all these pictures. With all these pictures of these women or that were girls. killed, that were kidnapped. Oh, and like missing, newspaper missing. articles, yeah. right. And he finds out that they were they all went missing. They don't know if they were killed. They, they're missing. They haven't been found, right? Mm-hmm. They're all missing. Right, they're all missing. Right, these girls and are they all, all missing. And they all went to his high school, actually. And they they all, to, right, they're all local girls that went missing from, like you said, the local high school. So he gets spooked and, you know, he leaves and then he goes back again, I guess, to get a closer look. And then he does, he finds out all these girls and he sees a name, like he he goes in his mom's office um, and tries to find who the unit belongs to. He finds it out. His name is Alex Bennett. Oh, Bennett. Okay. Bennett. Bennett. Alex. Okay. Alex. okay, something with a B. <laughs> so he finds out the storage unit belongs to this guy, Alec Bennett, and coincidentally... Another guy shows up saying, oh, this is my storage unit. This is my uncle's storage unit. I'm helping him clean it out because he's in an assisted living facility now. We need to clean out his storage unit. And the little boy was like, oh, that's his unit. You know, he's, I don't know if he's trying to warn his mom or what. Or he doesn't know that his mom is getting friendly with this dude. He and the little girl, Josephine, start investigating, um, find the Alec Bennett uh, who used to be a principal or something, or administrator at the high school? I don't know. He worked at the school. I don't yeah. know yeah. if he was a principal. Something. I don't think he was a principal. I think he just worked some at some type of administrator or something at this high school, yeah. and finds out he knew all the missing girls because they went to the high school, right. and he, you know, was familiar with them. So he started collecting the articles about the girls and their disappearances. Yeah. Um, and I guess later on, somehow his son, at the older Alec Bennett, his son was somehow connected to these crimes, or they thought maybe. Well, they thought and he maybe, tried because to, I think it was, his, he was mentally, something was Something wrong. happened something to him, right PTSD, or something happened yeah. to him. So they thought maybe he had something to do with it. And um, so he was keeping yeah. a close eye on all the evidence and things they found about these right. missing girls. Um, and another thing about these girls, all these girls were what they called troubled girls. They figured that they had ran nobody away. Nobody would miss them. Or, right. you know, whatever, that they wasn't, Really worried about them, but not all of them were because one of the girls, they her family was like, no, she they was. That's right. the only reason why they start looking into it because the one family, but everybody else, they get all oh, well. You know, she had drug problems or oh, oh, she was stealing stuff. That's why she mm-hmm. left and ran off. Mm-hmm. But the one family was like, no, no, somebody gonna look in this and find what. Right, she, up. my daughter wouldn't have ran off. Right, like, she would have. She wouldn't have ran away. Like, all right. So, like I said, him and the little girl start, you know, going to libraries, looking up their names, finding out the circumstances on how they disappeared. When they disappeared, and you know, just trying to find out, trying to connect the dots to that, see if this, if this guy's dangerous. So he so they thinks that Alex connected it yeah. with Alex, and they figure it has to be him. The younger just, Alex. So there are right. two Alex Bennett's: the the older one and the younger one who is coming to the storage unit. It's the younger one is that's his uncle. His uh, right. so they nephew, just named right, after right. his uncle. Right, that's what he said. They have the same name. Right. right. So they He's find that so out later on because Everett thinks that yeah. the younger Alec Bennett is the killer. He thinks he, he's the one. Well, at first one. he didn't. At first he thought he was uncle. Remember, because him and the little girl right, went, until to the, went to, went to the, the old age home to see the man. And mm-hmm. he was asking him all these questions about certain things. And I guess after they questioned him and stuff, they figured, well, it couldn't have probably been him. I don't right. think so. 
And then before that, I think they went to the house because they went to they found out what the address was. So they go to the house. Nobody mm-hmm. was if they thought supposedly nobody was there. right. They break into this house. Break in. I should say they break in. The door was open, <laughs> well, was open but, but they they, trans- they, they trespassed <laughs> into this house. Right. So the secret they found out some information. So mm-hmm. they saw pictures. They saw the names, and they figured it had to be the young guy, the young guy who did it, because mm-hmm. they saw a picture of him with I guess the uncle. But the young guy, right. the young Alec, says he's a reporter. Right. So he started investigating this as well because he's a reporter from out of town. Right. Uh, so he was and, following up on the story. Right. Trying but to, he mm, said yeah. that he wasn't even here during some of this. He was away at college. Right. So that was his alibi that he wasn't here. He was away at college or whatever he was doing. He was a reporter. Um, so he was also trying to cover for his cousin, the older, his uncle's. Son, right, because they were they, blaming him. Right, for that. they thought possibly they never proved it. Obviously, no, but they, I guess they have, questioned him and suspected him, because maybe he had, he a, had a connection with one of the girls figured, or something. Yeah. Um, so the two storylines are going on. So the little boy Everett and his friend Josephine are investigating the young Alec Bennett, whose storage unit they you know with all the girls' pictures, and then the other storyline is his mom. Um, and this detective Mendelssohn and her and these girls and her right. husband. I can't remember the husband's name. Something weird. He switched his names or something. I don't remember his name. Oh, mm-hmm. So there are these this are these two storylines and they're gonna converge at the end. So um, Lily is getting spooked. She tells her friend that she can't do any more about hiding the girls or sheltering the women. Um, and Lily in in the friend, I think her name's Abby, I don't remember her name, was yeah. like, Okay, I won't ask you to do it anymore. Um, I know, necessary right, unless it's necessary, yeah. unless I need it. Yeah. And lo and behold, Abby calls again and be like, um, yes, can you do this one last time? Right, can today? you? I have one lady. <laughs> I really need you to do this. I need your help. So she agrees. The lady comes with the little boy. Right. And Lily's heart is like, okay, you know, I have to do this. Yeah, I have to help child, this lady. So. Right. Um, and so she shelters this lady and her little boy. And, um, you know, they get their passports, they get their new paperwork, and then she does the same thing. She exchanges them, and they off, and she never sees them again. Right. So the first girl was there more longer than she intended to be because she didn't have her paperwork. Right. Come to find out, um, the police officer is the girl's husband who she was running from. So all this time, Lily thought the police officer was sniffing around about her husband, but actually he was sniffing around... Uh, about 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 his wife, about and, his his wife and his child, just off. trying to you know, because he never specifically said what he wanted. He never gave any. He mentioned her husband. He kept harassing her and making right. threats to her. And yeah, but no, he kept saying it was about some girl, missing girls who they went missing. Mm-hmm. That's what he was what investigating. Have you seen? Right, right. That's why she was asking her about you know cars or people hanging around. He never said you know it was his wife he was looking for or nothing like that. Well, that. He was crazy. And he never said he was looking for her husband. She would always just say, "Listen, I told you I don't know where he at, and that's it." Right. I don't know what the money is. I don't know what he has. I haven't heard from him. Right, but he was under the pretense right. of doing this. He was trying to. He kept going and harassing her and going to this right. location. It was like, is this right. the only location you got for the missing girls? Like, go search somewhere else. Right. Like, is what did they come up missing here? Right. And you know, one time, remember, she thought he liked her. Remember, like, oh, you kind of look kind of good, don't he crazy. Yeah, but she did. She thought he looked kind of handsome, don't don't he? Mm. And this like, I wonder if he just come around because he want to talk to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But honestly, um, the story did have me fooled. Like in the beginning, it was kind of slow, and he did have me fooled. He did have me fooled too. Like I said, it was very, very surprising because I thought it was Alex because he was acting weird and suspicious. Like he come to the yeah, but when he used to come to that storage unit, he used to be up there doing stuff, and she asked him like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "Oh, I'm just moving stuff around, moving boxes, moving Mm -hmm. some boxes." Yeah, but he just it was kind of weird the way he was creeping around himself, and then. They started dating because it seems like every place she went, he was actually they there. Are you stalking me? Are you right? Keep so tabs they on me? started, you know, seeing each other. Went out to dinner. Next thing you know, it was a date here, date there. Next thing you know, they kind of involved. So the son still thinks it's him. Right. So he's trying to <laughs> warn, warn his, his mother right. that I, you know, it's something going on. Which she's like, "Why are you acting so like know what you did crazy? last time?" Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then it's still another story. The dad, dad. Eventually, because his mom still doesn't get him a phone yet, but he figures out a way to use the computer to do this talk. Because his dad keeps calling the house. His dad has been calling all these years, and his mom has been the one that picked up. And finally, Everett picked up. 
Right. Because um, he found her phone in her room. Right. The phone was ringing right. and the little boy picked up and he was like, dad, he's like, Everett, finally. Like, right. so all this time, his dad has been calling the house and his mom has been hanging up saying, don't call. Like you said, sending the car. She's been hiding from right. him. Because she didn't want him so, to have anything right. to do with the boy. She didn't want him to know that his dad was still reaching out or, you know, right. so that he would be involved and have some have to lie and say, I haven't been in contact. She didn't want that. Right. But finally, Everett picks up and, like I said, because he didn't have a phone, he got this app on the computer where he can chat right. with his dad. Right, he begged his mother to get this app so he can chit-chat. He and told she her has to he do was going to chit-chat with his friend, the guy who he used to right, play games right. with. So do his homework. Right. right, and all that. So he would do that. She said, okay, if she might not, let him, let him get it. But that's what he was doing. That's how him and his dad would actually communicate. His dad would send a message. He would send one back, and they would you know, Wait, converse. Right. So right. he finds out, like Miss Yvonne mentioned earlier, that his dad is looking for this book. Right. Well, after he, he tell him he misses him, and he like, oh, by the way, have you seen this? I'm looking for this because it was his birthday. He was like, oh my right. god, yeah, something is that. Like, you would know what it looked like. It's leather. It's got like, some writing in it. Right. Blah blah blah. And he all this time he's had this book, and he like, no, I haven't seen it. He said he was going to look for it. Right. Right. He's thinking, is that oh. the only reason why he called me? He's looking for this book because he, mm-hmm. you know, he loved his dad. He wanted to see his dad. He mm-hmm. wanted a relationship with his dad. So at first when he was calling, he thought that's why he was calling. But then his he, something clicked. He's like, no, maybe not. Maybe he just wants this book. So he kept stringing him along saying, no, I haven't seen it. I'm going to look for it. Mm-hmm. So he kept saying that to his dad. Okay. And his dad wanted him to find it. Okay, if you find it, let me know. We can meet somewhere. He's like, no, nah, I'll, I'll look for it. the only reason he want to meet me right. to get this book. He kept thinking right. that, like, maybe that's the only reason. So as long as I keep telling him I'm looking, he'll keep calling me. Right, he'll keep I contacting won't, you know, me. He won't just stop Disappear. Right. right. <laughs> so he keeps stringing him along, telling him, yeah, I'm looking for it. No, I ain't seen it, whatever. So in the meantime, I guess his mom is still seeing this man. Um, still being harassed right. by Right, still being harassed by this crazy cop. <laughs> so, like I said, this the story was slow to me in the beginning, and I felt like even even the rest of like nothing really happened to me. Like all this stuff was right. It was going on, it, but like nothing story actually until you got to maybe the middle happened, and then it started like, picking up and going really fast. So, like I said, there was all these storylines, and they do converge at the right. end. So, Alex is not the killer. Um, they don't really tell you what happened to the girls, but Mendelssohn, the detective. Like we said, is the husband of Amber, the first girl at the beginning of the story who she's sheltering. He, I don't remember how it all came down, but he finally gets fed up and was like, where's my wife? I don't know how he found out exactly that she was the one that sheltered her. I can't remember how he found <clears throat> out or what happened that he found out that he that his wife was there and she was the one that was sheltering him. I don't know why he blamed her of all people. It's like, because listen, he dude. He was hiding her from she me. Was I didn't bring her here. It was like, your wife escaped to a shelter. She was brought here by my but friend. But figured you helped her get away from me. But I wasn't the only me. one. This is like, how do you single me? I wasn't the only one that helped but her. But she was there at the place, so you Everyone helped her get away from your crazy <laughs> self. Like, all I did was let her stay here, brought her some food, and then I dropped her off at the bus station. How you figure I'm the one that ate at your, ate in the bed at your wife? How you figure that? So, I don't know. That just seemed like, out of all the people, you singled me out. But I don't. I didn't even know your wife until Abby brought her over here. Well, that's what he said, though. You, you so, I don't, I don't remember how he found out. But anyway, he goes, he, like, flips the switch. He does. He goes from cop to crazy Crazy, food. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh. And did it come to find out, it's alluded to that he was the one all these years that has been kidnapping these girls. Yeah. That not the other dude, but it's been him all these right. years. Because remember, he came from, a, at the end, you find out he comes from another town. Mm-hmm. What girls mm-hmm. were missing from that town. Mm-hmm. And then he meets his wife, I guess, and they get married and have a baby. And he said he always told his wife that she was the reason they used to keep the monsters inside. Oh, because yeah. of her, right. yeah. he wouldn't do these things that he used to do. Right. Until he left. started... You know, beating, beating her or whatever, her. and then she figured, sure, "Oh, this he is crazy. Yeah, yeah. I got to get away from this." And guys. because he's a cop, of all things, <laughs> right? Who would believe her? Right. So that's why she did right. what she did. She, mm-hmm. You know, got away. Left one night with the baby, and you know, never right. was seen so again. He tracked her down and tried to, you know, like, "Where's my wife?" Blamed Lily. 
went crazy. Like kidnapped Lily. Kidnapped her, her, her tied her up. They took her to her Alex's son. house, remember? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, I don't why know. Why he went to Alex's house? I don't house? know either or how know. they know. But he killed, he killed the, he killed the, the, the son. Right, and injured Alex. And then Alec. he almost killed Alex. Injured Alex. Uh-huh. And there was another, who else did he, remember it was a girl or something up there that was with the son that he killed. Some other girl. I don't know if it was the last mm-hmm. girl who came up missing or whatever. Mm-hmm. But he, it was two people up there mm-hmm. dead. And he was going to kill Lily and the little boy because he and still couldn't find, you know. But the little boy's right. dad um, actually saves, saves the, the day. day. Right. He busts in through a window I or something. I think his name is Jones. Yeah, okay. that was his name, Jones. Jones. Yeah. So the little boy's dad saves the day. Um, he comes and... Whatever they do, and they they oh, get Mendelssohn down and right, and, yeah. and the little boy finally gets to meet and hug his dad in person, and was like, "You do care about me." It wasn't only about the book, because the little boy finally told him, "No, I can't find the book. I don't know where the book is at." Right. But the dad came anyway. Like the dad didn't just walk away. He was like, "I love you." Right. Um. So he was, Everett was happy that his dad came and saved the day. His dad disappears again into the night before the police right. come. Now his mom was helped him get away this time because she figured he deserved it. Yeah. He saved them. So right. He right. was, you know, after whatever he had done, he was technically still mm-hmm. cared about them. I guess. Right. <laughs> cared about his son. Right. So he saves the day. So the police eventually show up. I don't. Mendelssohn. I guess he's still I think alive. They arrested him. He yeah. Went he's to jail. still alive. Yeah. Um, and I guess all is well. Alex and, Alex, and you know, Lily. Slides, writes his story. Right. Mm-hmm. And they get together. Lily buys a house. She finally saves up enough money. Right. She buys a house um, close to where they live. Their neighbors, they have They're a They're not friends now party. because the neighbors actually used to like the son effort. So he right. They used to go over there. But the mama never Because the only people come. he knew that was even living out there. So mm-hmm. she didn't mind him. Like, she doesn't want to be bothered. But he's like, right. if you want to go, go ahead and. But I don't want to come over there. She'd be like, come over for some wine. Right. Come she, on, we, we having a crawfish dig, <laughs> whatever she said. she'd be like, yeah, like, whatever. She, yeah. She'd be like, no, yeah. no. But Everett would go. She but didn't Everett, know Everett would go. go. You can go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was cool. Everett was also gay. And the two ladies yeah. across the street. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he ma'am. was. And, that was. and the two ladies across the street, they were a couple. So I think that was a common out. Like, okay, there's another. I have somebody to go to, too. Because remember, his mom was, no, Josephine was worried about. And he was like, don't worry, I'm not going to try to put the moves on you. I I'm know, gay. but the only reason I'm saying, was he really gay or was did he just say he well, was? Because remember when him and, I don't know, him and the little girl either held hands or something, he's like, ooh, I got a funny feeling. Yeah. Uh, and then he was like, hmm, that can't be, though. Right. So I don't. I think he's a little confused. Okay. Right. Oh, maybe he was only 13. Going on with him. He wasn't yeah. sure. He, you know, well, yeah, or yeah, maybe yeah. because everything was going on with his dad, he was just having well, like, like he's only thirteen. Right, he's right, only thirteen. Right. right. So but in the story, in the story, yeah, it, he tells her he, he identified like as right. gay in the story. The author identified him as gay, yeah, and then I the two ladies. Just a little confused. Mm, whatever. Um, yeah. But he identified himself as right. he told the girl that he was gay. That he didn't like girls. So you got it because she was thinking like, "Don't worry, I'm not going to kiss her or attack her." So I mean, so I don't. That wasn't central to the story. It actually, no, just up something they brought up, right? Um, yeah. I guess to show the connection between him and the ladies across the street and why he would go over there and um, well, hey, you, you know that too. When nobody else out there, I mean, right, he the had ladies. nobody. But, it was just them and Josephine. And at first, he thought Josephine was maybe you know making fun of him or something because he lived way out there and what happened in his life. Well, she did. She, she was getting off the bus with him. I, she did it that time because she wanted to find out like where he lived at and talk to him. She really wanted to be his friend, but at the time he thought she was, you know, one of those, you know, how kids yeah, yeah, make pretend. fun of you because uh-huh. whatever is going on in your life, and that's what he thought. Mm. So it took him a minute before they actually bonded, and he figured, well, she is my friend, yeah. yeah well, and they turned out to be good friends. <laughs> They hung out together, went together. places. Her so, mom would take them places, and yeah, yeah. So it was a happy ending. Um, after like I said, all. after all, the guy, the the bad guy, but we never conclusively find out Until about the, the missing year. girls. Like, like I said, it's, and they don't say anything about it's what happened speculated that <clears throat> Mendelssohn was the one that was kidnapping they, they these girls, because but they it, never, because they never had, say they was found. He never, no. they never he had, talk about he the had bodies. Possession of one of the girls' necklaces with mm, him, and that's okay. why they figured it was him because he was in possession because he would take. Um, uh, trinkets or something from the girls, okay. and one of them the was um, he was in possession of a so necklace that belonged to one of the girls. That's crazy. I said, I always get caught. Why you got to keep something well, from a person something. you didn't know? You didn't even know this girl. Why you got to keep her necklace? That's like the other book, remember? <laughs> well, some people, they, the people that are, are are like that, they want trophies of you know stuff that they've done, people they killed and stuff, and that was like it was to him. He kept it. 
because it yeah, reminded and, him and of what, what he was his, did he ever say why he because he was crazy girls? He I mean was it was the always demons a, in him, the I don't know if he did it because he knew these girls wouldn't be missed so I'll kill them you know the troublesome girls right so he figured he, he never went out there any popular his, girls his who urges, was, you know, I guess they say it was, it was always the girls who was having issues and problems in the first place that's the ones he would go out but that's what that's what they say like profiles um, of killers anyway like people pick up hitchhikers because you thinking of somebody's hitchhiking they don't have no family or they or right. nobody because they can't get nobody to get them they hitchhiking somewhere so they're not going to be missed or like you said prostitutes or or drug addicts people think that because they're these things someone doesn't love them which isn't true just right. because you have a drug addiction don't mean your family don't love you no, but you know they thinking right. right so but some people like you said they seek out women or people who they know don't have family, mm-hmm. who they know won't have help coming. Like people in these homes or that are wheelchair bound. I read about a story. The guy didn't have any family. He was in a wheelchair, but he could walk when he needed to, but he was wheelchair. And the lady was acting as his caregiver, will come and get him and take him out and, you know, develop the trust in him. And come to find out, she was she robbed him, tortured him. Mm-hmm. And was proud of it. Like you said, was bragging about it. It's like, oh, I wish I could have tortured him longer. So who knows why people do some of the crazy, insane things that they do to other people for whatever reason. But it was a, it was a interesting, because I didn't see it coming. I didn't see him I as being the killer. killer. Said, I'm like, or crazy. No. Like, I just thought he was an annoying detective. That's what I thought. I mean, up to the end, I thought it was out. It's true. I didn't think it was well, Alex. I did, because he was the only other person that it could have been. Was well, nobody no. else in the story? Like I said, we knew it wasn't it was the, the old man because he. Well, I thought it was. I thought it was going to be something with the uh, <laughs> wife of the other lady member because they were saying she was quiet and she was always in the back and nobody really you know, saw. I didn't see that from them. No, they just seemed like they. Well, I did. I thought that a lot of people who just wanted to. She was like the nosy neighbor, but because well, of it, same thing. They were out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> So I'm You'd be nosy too. There's nobody else out there but them across the street, her over here. That is it. So what do you have to do with the rest of your day? <laughs> Nothing. What were you gonna say, Andrew? Oh, the son's name the uh the guy's son's name was Brian. Brian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but mm. And the Mendelssohn was gonna try and pin it on him. Right, okay. By, uh, I remember. Yeah, having given stuff evidence that showed Yeah, leaving it in the house. But he didn't leave it in the house. I but guess killing we were there would have been. I him. remember. Okay. Right. Yeah. And it was gonna he was kinda trying to show that maybe he had committed suicide mm. and yeah. killed and himself kill, so right. that they would say, Okay, he would did Case all this. Case closed. Okay. Right. Yeah. He killed he killed himself <laughs> and he killed the woman. And he was gonna be the one to uncover. Solve all. the mystery, right. 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 He didn't he right. Right. The time, right. He had the evidence, the the the, the, the trinkets did, and stuff in the grill, so he put it uh, he right. put it there with the guy Brian. And shot him and like you said, make it like the guilt was too much after all these years. Okay, I remember, okay. And he was going to save the day, be the hero, and finally yep. the bring, the, the, bring the person that right that right. killed or supposedly. We don't know if they was killed, but they disappeared. disappeared right. All these girls to justice. Because they already thought it was him. Right. So. Right. So a lot of the evidence, so we, yeah. Mm-hmm. We should have arrested him years ago. Right. So. <laughs> but he was unstable, apparently. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a slow, it was a slow book. It Nothing was, really happened until think about the, middle the, of the twist. About the things start going it was like roller. It was like going in, like page turn. Like wow, right? Yeah. My right. God! Then you got to E, like oh my God, it was him. I didn't believe that. Yeah. I, mean, never saw. I didn't I mean, see that did coming. Not see that coming. No, yeah, I knew, it, uh, but I knew it was creepy. Like I did not get a clue. It was the cop. I didn't because, <laughs> but the cop was creepy. He was getting on my nerves. Like he was annoying. But I thought he but, was probably looking for her husband. Right. That's what Me I too, thought. Right. Yeah. 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 They thought that was what she was hiding because mm-hmm. she had been in contact with. Right. Him. She didn't know what the money was, but she had talked to him. Mm-hmm. So no, yeah. I did too. But like I said, I don't remember how it was revealed when he flipped the script. I don't remember how he found out. Or it I think was he revealed. just got fed up one night and came to the, yeah, the store. Yeah, came there. Yeah, and, just and like you know, I demand you tell me where my wife is. I know you right. hit her. I know you helped her get Lily away. Was like, what did you talk where about? Is who she? was you talking about? Who was Amber? Right. Like, because right. she didn't know the girl's name. She right. didn't. That wasn't her. All she did was get her her papers, her new name. Right. She but didn't she know who she her was. Remember her friend, whoever this person was, right. picked them up there. Right, right. So he wanted her to tell him who where was you take and my where wife. did they right. take her. Right. She was like, "What? Who are you? What?" Yeah, but she didn't know who the person was. She just know they drove right. up in a camper, took her and the baby, right. and it's they like, was just gone. Know. And she didn't want to know nothing else. Right. That's right. She didn't know. He didn't know who Amber was at right. first. But like, who was that? 
Right, she didn't ever know any of that. Right, right. didn't know her name. But then she said she was going to try and find out to throw him off. She said, well, let me find out where she is. Right, she I'm, lied because, you know, let me where, stall him. Yes. Yeah, so like, you know what, let me, I'm going to tell you where he is. <laughs> Trying to buy time because she knew he was going to kill her and her son if she didn't. Right. Okay, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see that coming. To yeah, be I honest, didn't I didn't know that. That, that was a good shot. book. I mean, who, the lady horse. I mean, it was great. That was a twister for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't see that because it did not. I mean, no clues to get you to that. Point she at set all. it up all good. Like you said, the Alex, the she two did. Alex Bennett, the giving them the same name, and then yeah. the son, and then the creepy house, like in right. the middle, like over whatever. So she set it up to, like you said, to, to a deflect. True mystery. Right. Well, yeah. And you know that's how they do a mystery. They throw you off. To deflect. One, right. Have you go on in a, one, one direction. Right. You go in and then all of a sudden there's something out of left field. Right. It's like, oh, I like, didn't know that was it. That right. came from around the back side. Right. Right. You right. thought she was right. driving on Route 53. She and on now. Route 44. <laughs> right, right. So, right. yeah. That's the sign of a good writer. She can throw it. They, she right. can throw you off and give you clues for somebody yeah, else. Good job with that. You're thinking of somebody else and then they come up as like, Because oh, he yeah. just snapped off. I'm like, wait, what? He did. Because at first he was like this upstanding cop that would just come ask questions. I don't know if he was all upstanding. Sudden, he went, I'm just saying, when he used to come yeah, around, he, well, yeah, you just he was so stoic. He right, was so stoic. That's what stoic. I'm saying. Like, he like yeah. just coming, okay, if you have any, you know, here's my car, let me know if you see anything. So you're assuming he's a good guy. Mm-hmm. Just, Trying to find out what happens. It's just being annoying, being right. aggressive, trying to solve right. the case. Right, so you figure mm-hmm. if I keep coming to this place, I know she I'll had wear her something. Down. Right. I'll right. wear her down. She's going to eventually tell me the truth. Mm-hmm. But we didn't know what truth he was actually after. Right, right. <laughs> yes. He's after another truth. Played he can care way. less about a husband and what he did. Right. <laughs> like, that's the least of my problems. What a way So, yeah, so once the guy started beginning, it was slow for me. I was like, what is, it it was slow because wasn't nothing happening. It was slow. But like you said, once you did, it was like, it was a page turner. It was a page turner. I liked the characters. I liked Everett and Josephine. and um, I did. I liked everybody. And at the end, you even liked Jones because... Even though he left her hanging up, holding the bag. Yeah, his whatever. story was interesting. Like, <laughs> I, I like the characters. Left, I don't think she developed. He came through at the end. Yeah, right. he did. Yeah, so, I just know, wish she would have developed. I mean, I know the book would have, but I wish she would have not left a loose end. Like, I wish she would have, they would have went more with when they went to visit the uncle. Because it was kind of abrupt. Like, why were you investigating these? Groups? Where did it go? Like, why did you leave this in your storage unit? Like, why did you do all this? What What did you find? Like, what else happened? Like, they kind of she kind of just dropped it off, and we didn't really find out anything else as far as about these girls, and that was left unsolved. So it's like I said, we were left to infer right. from the evidence that he did it, um, but they never why, said how why many he girls did it. He did what it? happened to the girls? Where you put these but bodies I guess maybe at? It wasn't that. Important to the story. Well, I want to yes, find out because that I mean, I mean that was it. Because want to know, but I'm saying that was important you know, because that was a whole side mystery, right? And you could not have to almost assume that because he had the whatever the, from their right. The that's what I said. He probably killed, killed him. him. Like what else did he do? Yeah. Just hide him somewhere. Right, right. But it was like, sense. why now? It was like, why? Because his wife is gone. Well, that's what he said. He snapped. He said that his wife kept the demons inside. So when she left. And she he left the monster out again. So, but that's what I'm saying. So why? Again. So why frame somebody else? So that means that if he had framed this guy, and he killed himself, he would have had to stop killing these girls. So if his wife not necessarily had he was trying to find his wife to get so she can plug she that. Still push him back. But that's what I'm woman. saying though. If but his maybe wife he left disappeared, town again. remember right. the other place he, he had just left. Three girls had disappeared. He left that town. He was a police officer there. He left and came here and became an officer. So he probably would have so been the same thing. Slate, nobody Picked knows up and left, him. and you know I saw oh, the they case. Would think it's a totally I'm moving different. right. I'm right. moving on. He just moved to the next right. town and started again. He said, "Well, I can't take on. You know, I'm going somewhere else." Right. I don't know. That don't seem right to me. But okay. Well, he was crazy. <laughs> so, I'm like, if crazy you want to keep killing, right. <laughs> no. Yeah, that don't know. That don't. That didn't. Yeah. Mm. Well, like I said, when he after he met his wife, he didn't have the killing when he said. Right. So then when he she was done, so he moves there, gets a job. He, ha- he thinks he's happy because he got this wife. And, right, and that, but then I guess, you know, eventually he like, I'm just, you know, he just started attacking her. Like, the, his yes. true nature, that was his nature. It he came out of his nature, right. right. And then when she left, that really got him worked up. Because he didn't have anybody to take it out on. He was right. taking it out on her. So, so he had, now to he had to take it out on somebody else up, again. Uh, craziness, so right. he had to... He had was to, keeping he, it at bay. Right. And but she, then she left and that just, he couldn't hold it back. he was going to frame the guy, the brain guy. Be the a detective to solve the mystery, and he's just gonna move to another town and start yeah, all over start again. Oregon. Hmm. Start killing again somewhere else. 
Which one? Eventually, somebody would have caught him. But That's what I'm thinking. Eventually, but he, like, you know, but eventually he would have got caught up. But you know, at the time, he, you know, he, was, he, was he wasn't different. thinking that far. He right. Was just he was just thinking, thinking to the next time. He's gonna <laughs> right. get through this. I'm gonna get to the next time. <laughs> Maybe just get past this. Right. Oh, right. Let me figure that out later on. <laughs> I don't know. That, that part, I don't know, didn't really oh, mesh well with me. But it was, like I said, once it got going, it was an interesting story. It, it was. was a good twist. Mm-hmm. So I'll give it a thumbs up. I liked it. I liked it too. I give it two thumbs up. It was a okay, very two, good two industry. Two snaps in a circle. Two huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bag of chips with that. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> All right. So, At the Quiet Edge by Victoria Helen Stone is available for checkout at the Broadview Public Library. Um, so, if you would like to read this book, we a lot of spoilers in the book, but it's still a good read. Um, by all means, come down and check it out at the Broadview Library. We are going to be doing a book banter um, next. Um, Sister Betty, God is Calling Again. Is that the title of the book? Mm-hmm. That is Miss Andrea's pick. So stay tuned for our next book banter. Thank you very much for joining us at the Broadview Public Library. I'm Tisha. I'm Yvonne. I'm Andrea. All right. We'll see you at the next book banter. Bye. Bye.